What's up, summoners? I hope this patch is treating you well, but more importantly, I hope you're doing well. My name is Nathan Ng, and I'll be the host for our mid-patch update, where we'll provide updated tier lists for all five roles. Quick disclaimer, these lists are not ordered. Patch 11.20 had champion balance changes exclusively for the top end jungle, so we'll spend the majority of the time talking about those roles. Make sure you hit that sub button before we start, and without further ado, let's begin our update. Of course, it only makes sense to start with the top lane. Singe received a nerf to ease damage this patch. While he is a little bit weaker now, it's still clear that he's come out a winner with his recent balance changes. The addition of Grievous Wounds to his ultimate was simply too big of a power boost. He retains his high 52% win rate and high elo because of it. He impacts games with a ridiculous amount of side lane pressure, and at the end of the day, picking off one out of position opponent is usually enough to get that ball rolling in solo queue. Singe is staying in the S tier this patch. If you're trying to improve and become a player that heavily impacts your solo queue games, be sure to contact the coach over at ProGuides.com. Our coaches are excellent. We have trained challenger players as well as a huge variety to choose from, so don't miss out. Aurelia remains a commanding force in the top lane, but has seen her win rate drop considerably this patch. The nerf to her passive has significantly reduced her damage, and because of it, her win rate is down 48% this patch. However, Aurelia's ban rate is still very high, right below 40%. Our analysts move her down to the S tier because of this, and we think she belongs there until further notice. Shen was also nerfed this patch. His laning was and continues to be on the stronger side. His win rate has dropped from a 52% to a reasonable 51% after the nerf to his passive. He doesn't win trades as hard as before, and this takes away from his ability to win early game fights and begin snowballing. In the mid to late game, the lower shield also makes him a little bit more fragile, and he unfortunately does fall off because of it. In spite of this, he remains a powerful champion that heavily impacts the games with his ultimate and incredible utility from his W and E. He's getting close to dropping to the A tier, but he definitely makes a strong case to remain in the S tier. Total side note, I feel like you remind me of Shen, because you are in the S tier and you are quite dashing. <laughs> Keep your chin up, kings. Anyway, now moving on, we have a big winner of this patch, Darius. Our analysts moved him up to the A tier when they saw the massive buff to his W, but he ended up getting a lot more out of the change than they expected. They've readjusted his placement into the S tier. Great. With a cooldown at rank 1 reduced from 7 to 5 seconds, this is actually a huge increase in damage output. In long fights, this usually guarantees that he can cast it twice rather than once. It's not only the extra damage from the ability that he gets, the slow almost always guarantees a follow-up basic attack, so he can easily tag on an extra 100 damage if he's at max stacks. Also, this means that with his ease slow included, he can now slow an enemy 3 times over a fight rather than just twice. This increased pressure makes him a top lane terror once again, and he also benefits from his buff all the way up until level 18. That's it for the top lane, so here's a quick rundown of the top tier picks. In our OP tier, we have Fiora and Camille, and trailing just behind them are Irelia, Riven, Mordekaiser, Tom Kench, Jax, Malphite, Shen, Mundo, Set, Singe, Quinn, Aatrox, Poppy, and Darius in the S tier. Next up is the jungle. The first jungle change this patch was for Talia. She was starting to find a little bit too much success, and Riot was quick to drop the nerf hammer on her. Unfortunate for Talia main since they've been waiting for a chance to finally play her again. As a result of her reduced clear speed, Talia's win rate has dropped by half a percent this patch, but she still remains an excellent pick in spite of the hurdles that she has to climb through this patch. We'll be leaving her in the S tier for now. Amumu received a huge nerf to his Q this patch, increasing his mana cost while reducing his damage at later levels. While he was inarguably overpowered as a flex pick, Amumu is now more manageable. However, he does continue to put in some good work in the jungle, and his win rate there hasn't dropped that much. He's definitely still an S tier pick in both the jungle and as a support. Jarvan's endless onslaught has come to a close this patch. Don't worry if you like playing him, he's still pretty good. However, he's a straightforward champion, and what determines if he's strong or not is all up to the numbers. With his passive weaker this patch, Jarvan doesn't hit as hard as he did in previous patches, and his win rate has dropped by 2% in high elo and a bit less overall. While we originally believed that he'd remain an OP pick, we're moving him down to the S tier after seeing how big this nerf actually was. Elise received some solid base stat buffs this patch, and she's doing significantly better as a result of them. These buffs especially help during turret dives, and high elo players are able to push the Spider Queen to her limit because of them. In Korea, her win rate is up to 52%, while worldwide, her high elo win rate falls short of 51%. It's definitely subjective on how strong you think she is, but it's inarguable that she's a powerful pick right now. The extra defensive stats help her in combat as well as during turret dives, just as I mentioned. When Elise comes out ahead in either of these scenarios, you know that she's about to go off and make the first 20 minutes of the enemy team's game miserable. Let's be real, that's actually the entire length of many games, and at least of many others, so even if she does fall off, her early to mid game impact is definitely going to be enough to make a noticeable impact overall. It's also here that I want to ask you our question of the day. 
Which role do you think is the hardest to climb with in solo queue and why? I don't think there's an objectively correct answer and it might vary from rank to rank, but I'm probably gonna have to say ADC or support because you kinda have to rely on the other person and if you're playing solo queue, you know, it's really hard to trust people. Maybe it's just because I got hurt so many times in League of Legends and in real life, but you know. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, so if they also dare dive you with a jungler and a mid laner, it's just, it's just not fun. Anyway, let me know your answers in the comments down below. Hecarim is back packing some serious horsepower. The healing buffs to his W as well as the reduced early cooldown have increased his combat power significantly. His win rate increased by about 2% this patch and it looks like he'll continue riding the momentum off this buff for the next few patches as well. This placement has been readjusted to the A tier mostly because he's one of the hardest snowballing junglers in the game. His Q's disgustingly low cooldown, sustained from his W and high burst damage makes him nearly impossible to deal with when he's fed. We moved him up to the A tier, although he's stronger than before, he still has a lot left to prove before he's considered a top pick. Udyr received a huge buff to his R this patch. With the damage significantly increased, his win rate increased by a percent and a half this patch. He was moved to the A tier and it wasn't a stretch by any means. However, we'll have to continue monitoring him because he's still on the border of B tier as he stands. While his damage is much higher than before, it still stands that Udyr lacks versatility and his playstyle is both rigid and predictable. With enough movement speed, however, he can run you down and smack your face until you die. So it doesn't matter how predictable he is, you're probably not going to be able to run away. Replacing Jarvan in the OP tier, we moved up Graves. The meta has been shifting gradually and with several other champions nerfed, Graves is finally taking a spot at the top again. His high damage and mobility makes him oppressive to play against regardless of which role you're playing. He also scales well, meaning you don't necessarily win the game just because you survived. In the OP tier, we have Lee Sin and Graves, followed by Elise, Fiddlesticks, Zack, Kindred, Kane, Kha'Zix, Nocturne, Shinzao, Amumu, Lilia, Echo, Talia, Shaco, Talon, and Jarvan in the S tier. Moving on, let's go ahead and talk about the mid lane. As we mentioned earlier, that was it for the balance changes, but we'll still talk about the state of the meta for the other roles. If you play the mid lane, the big question you should be asking yourself is how's Vex? My follow up is that if you're asking that question, have you been playing the game for the past few weeks? Or maybe are you just banning her? This character is strong, she plays her role really well, and my personal opinion is that this should be accepted as a fact. Vex has high damage, great wave clear, and team fights remarkably well. Her ban rate is already past the 40% mark one patch after her release, and this is after her hotfix nerf. So if you haven't been seeing her, it kinda makes sense. In the middle of team fights, Vex can punish enemy teams when they give her an opening and make them pay with an instant loss. Her ultimate's ability to reset also comes in handy in the chaos of disorganized play. She's able to pick off enemies one by one with the powerful mobility that it grants her. While Vex does struggle to get away from her enemies most of the time, she's currently in a state of the game where she's so strong that running away isn't really an option because she can just kill you. Singe has also been added to the tier list this patch, but his play rate in the mid lane is rather low and our analysts have actually yet to see him in the game. For now, they're running off the data available to them, but he obviously does a good job of setting up ganks for his jungler. With the assistance of a corrupting potion, he can be pretty difficult to kill, even if getting him low often proves to be an easy task. In the OP tier, we have Zed, Uxian, and Vex. And in the S tier, we have Silas, Talon, Annie, Kiana, Diana, Ari, Yone, LeBlanc, Cassidan, Anivia, Katarina, Malzahar, Irelia, Heimerdinger, Fizz, and Yasuo. Next is the bottom lane. The state of the bottom lane hasn't changed all too much this patch, so there weren't any balance changes, but we do see a couple of niche picks hovering around. One of them is Yasuo, and he's finding a lot more success in the meta that heavily favors shorter range marksmen. Also, his wind wall is pretty good against Misfortune's ultimate. It's also good against plenty of other abilities, but that's the big one, since Misfortune is currently one of the most contested picks at the moment. Misfortune remains the most popular marksman in high elo because of her dominant early laning and powerful teamfighting once she gains access to her ultimate. Games this season are decided rather early on, so champions that shine early without falling off too hard if things go awry are typically a safe bet. There's also Garthus, but we'll hold off on adding him to the tier list because his play rate is ridiculously low at the moment. His 55% win rate should encourage players to give him a try though, and he does scale pretty well. Our OB picks in the bottom lane are Misfortune and Vayne, with Ash, Ezreal, Draven, Jin, Samira, Ziggs, Lucian, and Yasuo in the S tier. Not too much has changed for the supports either. With the Mumu nerfs, he's a little bit weaker than before, but our analysts have decided to bump him back up to the OP tier. He's relevant still because of his powerful scaling and mostly because of his ultimate. It's a great ability and it's no surprise that his ban rate is still over 30% even after the nerfs. The pick that we're currently watching out for is Nami. She's making some waves in the bot lane. She's seen a sudden surge in her pick rate this patch. There's certainly a reason that she's trending. The Lucian Nami bottom lane is nearly impossible to deal with. 
With their poke, Nami sustain, and even crowd control, picking up early kills is no big deal. Trust me, I run this all the time. Lucian is able to quickly burst down enemies with the buff from Nami's E. He also synergizes with her because of his reworked passive for even more bonus damage. Aside from this duo, Nami is a reliable enchanter and while she doesn't scale as well as some others, she's still a solid choice even in the late game because of her versatile utility. Also, her ultimate is great for resetting fights. Although, we'll leave Nami in the S tier for now, I'm gonna let you guys know right now that our analysts heavily considered moving her up to the OP tier. Try her out for a few games, especially if you have a duo partner and see how you feel about her. Our OP picks this patch are Soraka, Blitzcrank, and Amumu, with Thresh, Morgana, Maokai, Zyra, Nami, Yumi, Lulu, Sona, and Leona in the S tier. And that concludes our 11.20 mid-patch update. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below, and also check out the description in the link to join our Discord. It'd be great to have you guys be part of the community, but regardless, I'm glad you stopped by and watched the video. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.